What's up? My name is Eric Butler. This channel is called Report and Opine. I am back and from Cron 4, barriers often keep black community from seeking help for mental health. So this is more Black History Month propaganda. They're telling you that you are mentally ill, but you don't want to go get help for it. And basically what they're saying, in my humble opinion, is how come we how come you won't let us help you and then we'll send you a bill? Or how come you won't let us pretend to help you and then we'll ask for more federal funding, right? And the story says, the Biden administration on Tuesday announced a plan to transform how the nation understands and treats mental health. It's a community-wide issue and it's important to note that seeking help can be difficult, especially in the black community. So they are constantly, constantly laying on thick the the bigotry of low expectations. I mean, it's so hard in the black community, right? And this reminds me of that old Ami Horowitz video where he goes to UC Berkeley and all the college kids say, well, of course getting an idea is racist. Black people don't know where the DMV is. They don't have a computer. They don't know how any of this stuff works. It's so hard for them. And then he goes clear across the country to Harlem and everybody's like, yeah, the DMV is right there on 125th. I have my ID in my pocket. And of course, Joe Biden also says that you're not black if you don't vote for him. He says, well, they don't know how to get a taxi. They don't know how to use a computer. The list goes on and on and on. All of the hits, we remember all that. But now in this Black History Month propaganda piece, they are saying that it's hard. The black people don't want to get mental health. We know that you're struggling, but you just don't want to get help for it. Let us help you. Well, Black History Month is a time to celebrate black culture, but it's also an opportunity to have some pretty tough conversations. And what do they mean by black culture, by the way? Are we talking about listening to future we're talking about watermelon. I mean, every time they try to speak the language, right, if a police station in Florida paints a cruiser in Black History Month colors, then they get slammed for that. If Walmart comes out with Black History Month ice cream, then they get slammed for that. If a school serves chicken and waffles on Black History Month, they get slammed for that. So you want to celebrate the culture, but every time somebody tries to do one of those things, you call them racist and slam them for trying to speak the language. It's absolutely ridiculous. Candace Charles joins us live in the newsroom with the stigma around mental health in our black community. Good morning, Candace. Tell us more about it. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, folks. We're going to have a conversation, okay, guys? So without a doubt, every culture experiences mental health. What's unique in the black community is that the relationship is rooted in literal bad blood, causing what we see today, a vast number of black people experiencing mental health issues but not getting help. In fact, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, only... Uh the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. So HHS, the CDC, the FDA, the FBI, the United Nations Health Agency, all of these bureau bureaucratic agencies are going to tell you that you're struggling with mental health, but you're just too scared to, to get help for it. But of course, all they want to do is be able to A, charge you for the help that they're going to give you because they sell the problem and they will always sell you the solution. Or in the case that they're going to, or in the case that maybe you're too poor, you're in the inner city and you're not going to pay for it, we'll pay for it. It's free to you. So we need more federal funding. It always boils down to money. And of course, pills from the farm mafia, right? They want to give you a set of pills, whether it's climate change, whether it's gender transition, whether it's fentanyl overdoses, there's always going to be a pharmaceutical solution for this, right? I did another uh, video where they were talking about... Uh, Trank, and they're they're talking about how there there's going to be a, a solution to fentanyl overdoses, a pharmaceutical solution to to fentanyl and Trank overdoses. There was another one where there is a, a new a new virus in some tiny uh, Western African country, and they don't have the solution yet. They don't have the cure yet, but they will. They're working on it. So they're going to sell you the problem, or they're going to give you the problem, I should say, and sell you the solution every single time. So in this case, they're saying, why don't you let us help you? We know you are having mental problems. Just let us help you. Of course, they're the ones that are going to give you the mental problems. Like I always say every single time, right? So even with, with something like Rona, right back in New York, there would be constant, constant commercials, every single commercial break on TV, every single commercial break on radio, YouTube videos everywhere, Rona, 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 death counter. And then they say, Is, are these times tough for you? Do you need help for the problem that we just bludgeoned you over the head with for the last three years? Do you need help? We'll help you now. 
one in three black adults who need mental health care receive it. A long history of suffering in the past is the problem. Rooted in chattel slavery from the late 18th century, today a sick- Of course, slavery is the cause. So all the people who never experienced slavery, they're so far removed, their great grandparents, these young kids, they, they know nothing about it. They're a slave to an iPhone, but that's a different story. And we're all guilty of that, you know, uh, no, no shade. We all have our own issues, but slavery is the reason why you have mental issues and you need to come look to us and we'll help you fix it. And here's a couple pills. But persist that seeking help is weak. Many people choose to seek support from their faith community rather than seeking a medical diagnosis. According to recent stats, black people often have to see non-black therapists for help with of little to no course, black mental health professionals. The okay, okay, so slavery is part of it. it. This is very strange how they will never acknowledge the obvious cause of some of these problems, right? So if there is something that they force people to do and now people are having side effects and certain people are, you know, dying suddenly, it's everything but the immediate obvious cause, right? So the news constantly pumping out racism, the protests, the riots, all of this stuff, the agenda constantly telling you that everything is racist. And that could not possibly be the cause for these mental health anguish, right? And then, of course, for them to say, well, they often have to see white doctors. So on top of all that, it's also racist because there's not enough black doctors. And the cycle continues. It never ends. You are always the victim, right? And we are, of course, going to help you, whether whether you're going to pay for it, whether the government's going to pay for it, the, not the government, but the taxpayer, right? It, it's always It always boils down to money. It always boils down to pharmaceuticals. So what drug can we get you on? Church was and often still is a place you can go lay down your burdens to someone who looks like you. And that's a, that's the thing, right? Someone who looks like you. So they get to they get to kill two birds with one stone. So not only is slavery the problem, but there's not enough black doctors. And, and it's just it's a never ending cycle of making sure that you are miserable, you are depressed and you are going to hopefully take some pharmaceuticals. But if you're not going to do that, at least we can get you to a doctor and siphon off some money through that transaction. African-Americans in particular were seeking people who understood. I believe strongly in the laws of attraction that that when people see other people that look like them that are in a certain uh, sector, that they're more likely, you know, to reach out for help. Uh, now there is some good news. People are trying anyway. Recently, studies have showed that college age black people are more likely to seek mental health help than their white counterparts. Well, because they're super young and they're susceptible, they have they have for better, for worse or for worse, I should say, I should say, have bought into the agenda. Right. They, they are they're buying it the Gen Z. And I don't know how real that is. This is all fake news and nonsense. But younger people are more susceptible to this, I, I believe. I mean, I could be wrong, but college age, if you're, you know, 18 to 22 years old and you're constantly being bombarded with this propaganda about racism, which, of course, it's all the same. The racism propaganda, the Rona propaganda, the climate change, the gender ideology, it's all the same. It, the, the end goal is always the same. So why discuss this now? Because a change is still coming and there is hope. We have a list of resources, including a list of black mental health professionals and the pastors who work alongside them on our website, itnewsnow.com. This is completely despicable, right? Like their whole agenda is completely despicable. The AIDS Memorial well, Quilt is just made up of individual panels. Each one. I'm going to get the ads. At least it's not in Spanish this time. All right, so this is completely despicable. It's like Pete Buttigieg, right, where these train derailments are happening all over, all over the place, toxic spills and stuff, airlines down, all these flights grounded a month or two ago, and then you also have the baby formula shortage. That's a different story. But Pete Buttigieg, when, he, when they want him to talk about the train derailments, he's talking about, well, these construction sites are hiring too many white people. This is all so despicable, but that's just how stupid they think you are. And that's why they lob on the soft bigotry of low expectations ad nauseum because they think you're that absolutely 
dumb, right? But again, they think everybody is dumb enough to buy the Rona propaganda. They think everybody is dumb enough to buy the climate change propaganda. They think everybody is dumb enough to buy the gender ideology propaganda. And on the glass half full side, I don't think they are, right? I think maybe that's why people aren't going to your weirdo mental health uh, agencies that you're trying to plug. This is basically an ad for some black doctors, but they don't want to go to it because they can see through it all. And they realize that they can deal with their own problems on their own without help from some weirdo doctor who inevitably is going to try to put them on some sort of pill. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe.